here is kind of put all the frames on the timeline and then retime them all in one go. So basically, and I know the class is finished, so sorry for keeping anyone. If you need, really need to go, you can go. Um, but basically, we're going to take all our images, make sure when they're in here that they're organized by name. So the original name uh, in ascending order um, should be the right way around. Um, by default, um, each image will be imported into Premiere as if you want to do a slideshow. So it's five seconds long. Um, which we don't always want to do. Um, I've imported these in in a folder, so they're in their own folder, they're not kind of mixed up with the other videos. And then when we drag them onto the timeline, they'll each appear on the timeline as these kind of five second videos. So if we try and play back the hyperlapse here, it won't seem very hyperlapse, it'll just seem like a very slow uh, kind of slideshow of the same thing, which won't be very exciting. So if we grab the selection tool and select all these, there's a couple of things we can do. Uh, the first is if we right click and use this um, option set to frame size, it will rescale all those images so they're the right uh, frame size. Okay, so they'll all fit into the frame size. And then if we right click here again and go to speed duration, and when we do this, we want to make sure we have the ripple option on, otherwise, we'll get a gap between each of the clips. And in the duration, uh, we're running here at 30 frames per second, um, so two making this two frames, we can just type in a two. We'll basically make each uh, clip uh, two frames long. If we type in two and then a period, full stop period, then it will be two seconds. So effectively when we type in two period, we're typing in two, zero, two period, zero, zero, and it's making it two seconds long. Um, so we want two frames, so we're just gonna type a two in there and click okay, and it will look like they disappeared, but actually they're just kind of all joined together there. And now, if we have a look at this, we've got all those images strung together. Um, we can also, uh, with those images, um, wrap them into a, a sequence as well, so we can nest them. So when you've got your sequence set up, if you keep your clips selected, okay, um, then basically, if we right click on those and go to nest, just use the default name, then with the hyperlapse, if we zoom in here, then one thing we can do with this is we can first of all double click on this now and rescale that whole image sequence so it fills the frame rather than having to go through each clip and do it. Um, and we can also add animation. So if we come to the beginning of this, come up to our effect controls, we'll set the keyframing on for position and location. Why can't I see location? Oh, position, position, scale and position. I was looking for location. Uh, position and scale. Then uh, we've added a keyframe there. We'll come to the end and we will uh, double click here. We'll move this up to the top of the building and scale it down a bit. Not that much. Actually, we should have done the scale the other way. So we'll actually scale this up at the end and come back to the beginning here and scale it down. So it's going to just make that zoom seem like stronger when we go in. Okay. Um, also, I can't remember if this works in Premiere Pro, but we're going to try it anyway. If we select this clip now, the hyperlapse is super jumpy. Um, if we go to effects, this will or won't work, I can't remember, and go to warp, stabilizer, and drag this onto that nested sequence, it will stabilize the nested sequence. So we basically get the stabilization as well. Uh, I just typed in warp, um, so it's finding the warp stabilizer, which we looked at last week, but uh, not in this particular instance. So, so basically by nesting a sequence, we can then warp stabilize it, which will stop that kind of complete shakiness. Okay.